Hello there, this is Hans Forschner with Napkin Engineering Network. This second video highlights the Soundplan Noise uh, version 9 geodatabase uh, start ribbon. Uh, this video is for educational purpose only and does not replace any software training. Let's get started. Here at the very top we see the uh, start menu or the start ribbon and um, I start from left to right. I'll go over here. We see the objects the default view is the last 12 objects that we have used in the yeah, previous uh, sessions. We can go down the list here by clicking on this uh, little arrow here. And it goes down uh, all to show all the different objects that are in available in the geodatabase. We can also click on this icon here at the bottom. It gives us a full list. And this is then grouped by different uh, object types. We have general objects, point line areas, text. We have all the source objects, all the aircraft noise objects, environmental objects, receiver and tools objects. All right. So if you don't see um, the object you would like to digitize, then go down the list or pull it open. And then it puts it up in the top uh, 12 that are always visible. Then to the right we have a view filter. This view filter allows us to uh, either look at all the objects or uh, selective by geofile or layer or by current object type or by selected objects. So let me kind of show that uh, here current geofile. Let me zoom back out. So here right now the uh, geofile is commercial buildings. So we only see the commercial buildings. Then if we see, uh, for example, residential homes, we only see the layer residential homes. So this is basically by layer we can select and visualize. Now we can combine that uh, with uh, current object types. So if you have two of these selection filters uh, selected, you could define if you have a geofile that has multiple objects, you can search within that geofile by the objects. Now, if you have uh, objects selected, um, let me go back, all objects, and let's say I have uh, some of these buildings selected, and then I can also select by selected objects, and then I only see the selected objects. All right. Um, now, to the right of that, we have a view filter. So let me go back to all objects and then here we have a view filter and right now the view filter is uh, a top view and we can go total view so we see everything. Uh, we can go to construction site so here is the construction site viewport. The viewport we can add additional viewports right here. Show viewports, rename, delete and add and then here again total view and then in the view control right here, you can uh, switch between top view and front view. Interesting on in the front view now is that you can see the elevations. So if you start it, the program automatically uh, puts everything in a uh, auto scales the side side view or front view. But now we have the option to use the wheel on the mouse to uh, change the scale increase it, decrease it, right? And we can do that also in the side projection. So here we have uh, all the elevations. It looks like it shows some of the uh, generic areas without elevation with uh, very low elevation information. But yeah, so here you can change this side projection that can be extremely helpful to get a better idea of the uh, uh, consistency of the elevation of the objects. In these uh, side views or front views, you can also click on the objects by, uh, with the left mouse. Again, the crosshair changes to an arrow. With the left mouse, it opens up the object. So in this case, this is a wind turbine. Here, yeah, this uh, object uh, layout has pretty much not changed. There's a few changes in here. Uh, so here in this case is the name. We have the geofile. 
Now here, one of the things that I like uh, my personally, there is a little icon with a plus right after the geofile. So after you enter an object, if you want to create a new sub geofile, you can do that here on the fly. So you don't have to exit and create the geofile and then reopen the object. Here you can do it as you go and uh, add a new layer. So this could be, for example, wind turbine 1, wind turbine 2, or phase 2, phase 3, or whatever. And then again, here are the rest of the properties of that object. All right. So let me close that. And I will continue here with the uh, bitmap and geometry viewports. So here we have the different viewports. So here again, the construction site viewport. If we want to do another viewport here where the uh, beer festival is, I can add and just say add viewport and this is beer festival. All right, so now we have three viewports. Okay. Now with each of the viewports, you can also zoom out, zoom in still. It's not limiting that, but it just jumps right to that uh, zoom factor. Then we have bitmap, and let me first of all go back to the top view. We can uh, look at the detailed uh, viewport. Let me go back first to the warehouse. So here we can now see the, uh, the aerial and within the entire project zoom. So this is quite different to the previous version. So here you can see whatever area uh, viewport plus the surrounding geometry. Right. Um, so here we can toggle and turn it on, to uh, turn it off. And then also we have a bitmap manager right here. The bitmap manager makes uh, the entire usage of bitmaps uh, extremely powerful. Uh, let me open the bitmap manager. So here we have multiple bitmaps already selected here or downloaded and we give them all the name. We can see the coordinates here, bottom right, uh, uh, bottom left, top uh, right corner. We can see the coordinates that are referred to. Um, let me uh, go back to the next one. Um, then we also can change the coloring. Uh, we can make it all uh, black and white. We can change the contrast. We can uh, uh, mirror the bitmap if if that's, for example, a drawing of a, a certain layout of a car wash and you want to just flip the thing around, you can flip the bitmap and then rescale it. Um, but one of the powerful things here is the option of creating a bitmap group. So here I have a bitmap group. I named it Detailed Map Import. And this map uh, group has actually a total of seven aerial views um, assigned to it, which is the first one is the entire project. And then we have sections that are more detailed. And I can load all of these bitmaps in one go. So let me do that. So here we have uh, the detailed map import. And that imports the more coarse aerial in the background and the more detailed aerials overlaying that, that uh, more coarse bitmap in the background. So with that, uh, you can uh, yeah, easily combine different aerials. Uh, I can show like a, like a detailed difference here. So here on the left, you can see that's more coarse bitmap. And here we have the more detailed bitmap. Uh, so here you can see the different uh, Container, uh, container sphere, it's, it's not a little bit fuzzy. And in here on this one, you can actually see the outline of the containers fairly detailed. All right, so that is the bitmap manager. And again, here the selection of no bitmap or whatever bitmap you want to visualize. All right, then we have the next construction option, um, different angle inputs. So the right angle mode can be turned on here. 
by clicking on this angle mode. So that will allow you to digitize uh, buildings with right angles. Um, with shift and digitizing, you can uh, basically temporarily uh, get out of that right angle mode. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it goes in uh, whatever angles. You can see the angles here in the bottom left as you digitize. So if I uh, put in, for example, this building right here, and I start with the first point. So let's select buildings. I'll start with the first point. All right, 10 meters. And I go to the end of this with a with the uh, control, I, I don't go with the uh, default angles. So this is my first point. And then after that, I go to the next point. And then down here in the bottom left corner, we can see the angles from the last point that we have, right? And so if I go to this point, it shows me 270. So that's uh, uh, perfect uh, 90 degree. Then I go down, over, down, down. And I, at this point, I can double click and it should, nope, it didn't finish that correct. Let me activate that, right click, activate, and double click right here. There's also circle inputs right here. And uh, so yeah, that's the construction of uh, area area objects like buildings, uh, uh, circles right here for tanks and so forth. Um, let me uh, discuss the next uh, select objects. So here we have uh, select all, that would be a control A or just clicking on this A, right? Or clear selection as this one. And then here, just like with the objects, uh, you have a whole set, set of different objects. Up here, it shows you the last four that were used. So here we can also select by geometry, um, geometry parameters like elevation or building height or length and so forth by uh, properties, uh, or we can uh, invert the selection. So depending on what you've um, selected here last, you have the last four uh, selections available directly. If you don't see that, then you go with a pull down. Then uh, finally here, the property explorer. So here we can open up the property explorer and then it shows again the property explorer with the functionality of changing the names, the uh, properties and so forth. I, I don't wanna go into detail here. Um, and then here we have different other options to um, change assigned geo files. Um, we can redo that or convert the object type. Uh, we can um, copy objects to a geo file, or we can uh, move and rotate selected objects. So again, here are some of the defaults of uh, modifying objects, moving them around, changing them. Uh, copying them, rotating, creating multiple copies. That's actually a new feature. So here, if you have one building and uh, you want to duplicate it multiple times, you can do that with the multiple copy objects. Here we can also mirror, copy and mirror in X or parallel to X or Y, um, and then also property operations. All right, so again here we see the last uh, couple of objects uh, always selected or showing here. And then if you don't see it, you can put, uh, go with a pull down your menu to visualize all the, the options that you have here. Yeah. So let me go back to total view. And uh, clear the selection. Thank you for listening.